Today's episode of Ham Radio 2.0 is brought to you by MFJ. MFJ sells antennas, analyzers, connectors, meters, amps, and accessories. Extensive research and development goes into the ham radio communication hobby business. New products are constantly on the horizon as MFJ realizes that to stay on top, it must continue to create and innovate. The main source for inspiration for new products comes from MFJ's growing customer base. MFJ receives many letters and phone calls from its clients requesting new equipment to be built. Other requests come in formally, in person, and in ham fests. For anything ham radio related, shop MFJEnterprises.com. Howdy, this is Jake, Kilo Golf 5, Golf Delta Mike, coming to you from Forestburg, Texas. You're watching Ham Radio 2.0. You can catch all of Jason's videos on his YouTube channel, Ham Radio 2.0, or live from the hamshack.tv. Feel free to share, comment, like any of the videos that you see on his page. Thank you. Ham Radio 2.0, episode 85. The new TYT TH8600. 25 watt mini mobile radio. Why? Why wouldn't they make one? Everybody else is making one. So you've seen my videos, hopefully, if you're watching my videos. You've seen my videos. For the Lyxon brand radios, um, the backpack radio, the 10 watt radio originally, and then the 25 watt radio later on. Um, they were kind of the first company to come out and say, we're going to make a mini mobile radio that's, shoot, no bigger than a cell phone, barely bigger than an HT, and we're going to do it for, you know, they, they, uh, it was, they're always, always been dual band, um, and it was very lightweight, easy to put on a bicycle, easy to put in a go kit, easy to do that sort of thing with, so, um, a couple other companies came out with them after that. Uh, Yezu has one. I don't really know when that one came out as compared to the other ones, but that one's a lot more pricey than the other ones. But this is TYT's version, and it has a color screen, as you can see in the box. Uh, so we're going to open this thing up. We're going to put a meter on it. We're going to test it out, and we're going to maybe maybe try to do a couple of QSOs with it so that uh, we can see what this is about. So this is the newest radio from TYT as far as the analog side goes. And um, we're going to unbox this thing r real quick. <clears throat> so, unboxing. About to commence. Turn your set away. Look this way. You don't like the unboxing part. Going to be really quick, actually, because I just want to put it on the bench. There's a manual for it. Here's the size of the radio. It's got a decent sized screen on it right there. Just like that. One PL2 or one SO239 on the back. It's got a place for a USB and a headset. That's the symbols that are on the back of it. You can see, let's see, right there. Focus. So right there, it's got a little screw that holds that cover on. But that's where your USB cable goes for external programming and where your external speaker and or headset would go. They got a headset symbol on it, which is cool. It's kind of neat, I guess. Um, Semi-proprietary plug there. Well, it is, that is a proprietary plug. It's not the standard T-connector. Certainly not an Anderson power pole. But that's the uh, proprietary plug that comes with it. But it comes with a cable. Comes with a microphone. Comes with... Uh, I got a programming cable for it, but it didn't come with it. I had to buy that separately. And uh, got a pretty beefy-looking microphone there. So we're going to check all that out here in just one short minute. Put this thing on the bench. Give it a look-see. And see what kind of uh, 
performance we can expect from it. You know, these mini mini mobile radios have been pretty popular, really. And uh, I don't remember how the mic went in there. <laughs> so, I'm going to put this on the bench, do some testing on it, and see what it looks like. So, thanks for watching, guys. If you found me on YouTube, uh, go to my website, hamradio, the number two, dot com. You can see all the episodes I've done to date. And like I said, this is episode 85. Thank you very much for watching. Here is the TYT TH8600 dual band large color screen mini mobile 25 watt radio. We're going to do some power testing here. Uh, you can see the microphone right here. It's got a DTMF mic with it. And it's got function keys along the, the edge right here. PTT, of course. It does not have up and down keys on the top of the mic, but they are right here on the front of the mic. So you can switch back and forth between bands with this AB button here. And then you can... This will control... If you're not in a menu, these up and down buttons right here on the microphone will control your volume. So you can pretty much do everything from the microphone. So if you got this installed mobily and driving down the road, you can... You don't have to reach down to the radio. You can tuck it up out of the way somewhere and put it uh, put it wherever you want. So uh, let's see. Um, this we can go into the menu here. I'm going to do this off camera, but it's it's be, I'm pushing buttons on the microphone. So we've got signal, and you can do DTMF two tone and five tone on it. There's not a back button on the mic that I've discovered yet. It might be nope. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so it's the top button that says VFO right there. That says VFO, VFO, call channel, menu, and fun, which fun is for function. It's a shortened abbreviation for function. So if you hit menu and then you hit VFO, it backs you out of it. So I'll go in here to the menu, and I'm going to go down to utilities, radio settings, and I'm going to scroll down here to the power level. And it's got three power levels, high, mid, and low power. It's advertised as a 25-watt radio, so we're going to do power tests on both bands. I'm going to set it to low power. Basically, you just set it there and hit menu to get back out of it. Uh, you can hit OK on the button here, or on the face, rather. Same thing. So we're on... 440 side right now, 441.0. I'm transmitting into a dummy load. We're on the 20 watt scale, and it's putting out about 5 watts, oh, about 6 watts right there. So I'll go up here to the 2 meter side. Oops, no. Go into the same menu. There. About six watts there as well, keying up six watts. Both um, two meter 146.52 and 441.0. Uh, so low power, five watts. Back in here, and it doesn't save. It doesn't save the menu, the last menu you were in. It's always starting you over at the beginning, so that's kind of a pain to try to go back to the previous menu you were in. Mid power. I'm going to set this one to mid-power also. Here. Here. Mid-power. Boom. Okay, first time, uh, 441.0. And well, that's about 11 watts right there. And then we'll go up to the 2-meter band. That's about 10 watts on 2 meters right there. Okay, KC5 HWB testing. Uh, again, I'm going into a dummy load. Some people freak out about that when they watch my videos. They're like, yo, you never ID'd. No. Transmitting into a dummy load. I shouldn't have to ID. Let's see. Let's go power level and change this one to high. Same thing for the menu down here.
And on 441, it should peg the meter because this I'm on the 20 watt scale right here on this meter. Pretty much pegging it. Turn it up to 20. Uh, it's pretty much actually, you know, it's right at 20 watts on the UHF side. It's right at 20 watts. I'm going to look back at the, uh, and it does advertise, looking back at the manual here. As you can see, let me see if I can move back. There, there we go. Down there at the bottom, it does advertise 25 watts on VHF or 20 watts on UHF. So, it's doing exactly 20 watts on UHF as it should be right there. So, I'm going to change it to the VHF side, and we should see five more watts of power. Uh, not really. About 21 watts right there. About 21 watts of power. I'm going to put it on a local repeater and see if I can key it from my dummy load. Uh, let's set the offset. All right, in order to set the offset, what you do, and this is not very intuitive. I did have to read the book for this part. But this low button right here changes your offset frequency. You can see on the bottom band, I've got an L an H and an M, low, medium, and high right there. I'm going to leave it on high. I'm going to long press it, and it comes into the VFO there, or it comes into the menu to set the offset. And you can see right there at the top of the screen, it's got a plus sign. If you long press this low button again, the plus sign goes away. Long press again, it changes to minus. Long press again, it changes to plus. So you can set it for plus, minus, or off, basically. And then when you go in there like this, zoom back out, and you key up, you can see it goes 44875, which is the offset, from 443.75, which is a plus 5 megahertz offset. And that's the correct offset on the local repeater. But since I'm going into a dummy load, it is, it's not keying the repeater, so no need to ID there. One thing I will show you real quick before we end here, when I hooked this thing up, this has got a proprietary cord on it. This guy here. This thing is a proprietary... Um, get both my... There we go. It's a proprietary power cord. This is what the power cord, the pigtail off the radio looks like. This is what the pigtail, the power cord that it comes with looks like. It's waterproof. It's got this little rubber grommet here. It has a clip here, and it has a little latch right there for the clip. So I put it together like that with the clip to go underneath the latch. Now what's wrong with that picture? The red and the black are opposites on either side. So when I plugged it up the first time, my power supply faulted because I wasn't paying attention to the color. I was going in with what the with what the the what looks to be a one-way connector would go now the good news is um, there's the power supply faulted there's a protection in the radio that does not allow it to be hooked up backwards so the power supply protection came on and it um, uh, actually that might be in the power supply anyway it didn't burn up the radio um, so I switched it around Like that, where red is on the top, you can see right here. Black is on the bottom right there. And it works fine. But they obviously put the power connector on backwards at the TYT factory. So be careful about that. If you're hooking it direct to a battery, you may not be as lucky as I was. I didn't burn up my radio. It worked fine. Um, but that is a <laughs> obviously something that's wrong that's set on the radio. Don't know if all of them are like that. This is just a sample I've got. So I can't look at uh, other ones to tell you. So... That is the TYT TH8600 Mini Mobile 25 Watt Dual Band Radio. There we have the newest analog radio from TYT, the TH8600, which is their dual band mini mobile. About 25 watts on VHF and 18, 19 watts on UHF. I did change out that connector, and my connector was bad. So the 
problem with it fluctuating power when I moved the radio around. That was the connector, not the radio. So just wanted to make sure that connector came apart too easily. I was trying to take it off of the. It's a. Uh, it's an SO239 to um, SMA male adapter. Um, and when I was trying to unscrew it from the body of the radio, the whole thing came apart in half. So threw that connector out. Got an another another SMA male to SO239 adapter. No problems. So that was not a radio issue. It was my connector issue. But that's good to know. Um, it's still good uh, good info to have. Good, um, you know, good testing. That's what testing is all about is to figure out where your weak spots are. So anyway, uh, some of you commented on uh, the, the opening of this video was shot earlier. Um, you can tell my, my shirt and my hat's different now. This is a new hat that I got. It's a snapback hat. It's what, what they're calling snapbacks nowadays. Um, so it's a little bit too... It's not really exactly my style. I still like the flex fit and the uh, the fitted hats better, but I might, I might get used to it. I like the flat bill across the top. That's the new thing. But obviously this is my um, logo here for the Ham Radio 2.0. And at the beginning of this episode, I was wearing a DMR t-shirt, and I was wearing that same t-shirt in the last couple of intros, the episodes. I record two or three intros at once, and I put all the videos together later. And someone commented, wow, where'd you get that shirt? You can get those shirts on my website if you go to hamradio2.com and scroll all the way down to the bottom. In the center, there's a listing of all eight or nine different shirts I have right now. If you click on any of them, that's going to take you to another website, and from there, you'll be able to pick and choose whichever shirt you want. Uh, I got free shipping on those shirts right now. I'm fixing to be adding more stuff like this and t-shirts and more and more stuff to uh, livefromthehamshack.tv, which is the same website as hamradio2.com. Hamradio2.com, when you type in hamradio and the number 2.com into, into a browser, it redirects you to livefromthehamshack.tv. Livefromthehamshack.tv was my original URL. And I'm going to keep it. I'm not getting rid of that. I've had it for about three years now, so it's not going anywhere. But I registered hamradio2.com not too long ago because it's just easier. It kind of rolls off the tongue easier. It's easier to remember, that kind of thing. But uh, but all my T-shirts are for sale out there. Um, I'm going to be adding hats. I'm going to be adding more T-shirts. I'm going to be doing... Um, uh, thank you to those of you who have sent me guest intros. You saw a new guest intro at the beginning of this episode. I'm looking for more of those. In fact, uh, I've come up with a new idea for guest intros. Um, I tell you what, I'll tell you about that next time. Uh, thanks for watching episode 85. Uh, go check out episode 86, which we'll post a week after this one does. Um, and right around this time, this is uh, March of 2017, right around this time, I'm going to be attending the Belton Ham Expo in Belton, Texas. If you're from Texas and you've ever been to a ham fest, you've probably at least heard of Belton. Belton's probably the best outdoor flea market ham fest in the state of Texas. I'll be attending that one. Well, it'll be... I will have attended that one already by the time this video posts. So, um, But I'm going to be recording some stuff from that ham fest, so look for that in, in an upcoming episode also. 73, guys, thank you for watching. Please subscribe to me on YouTube. Go check out my website, hamradio2.com. You can see all my episodes, and you can do some donation stuff along the right-hand side of that website as well. 73.